हेलो स्टूडेंट्स तो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट एफ आर बी एम एक्ट तो एफ आर बी एम एक्ट विच वॉज इंट्रोड्यूज इन टू थाउजेंड थ्री एंड इट स्टैंड फॉर फिजिकल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एंड बजट मैनेजमेंट एक्ट टू थाउजेंड थ्री तो बट इट वॉज स्टार्टेड इम्प्लीमेंटिंग फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड फोर नो दिस एक्ट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर योर बोथ प्रिलिम्स एंड मीन्स तो इट इज़ वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट टू रिमेंबर द फीचर्स ऑफ दिस एक्ट तो बेसिकली देर आर सिक्स मेजर पॉइंट्स इन दिस एक्ट और सिक्स सेलियन फीचर्स नो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू अंडरस्टूड वाई वी नीड दिस एक्ट नो एज द एक्ट सेज फिजिकल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एंड बजट मैनेजमेंट एक्ट 2003 now before the introduction of this act we have seen that most of the government though or you can say those who are running the government they used to favor populist budgets populist budget it means means in order to in order to get votes the ruling party used to spend a lot and in that spending is basically revenue expenditure so they used to spend a lot and that spending is basically revenue expenditure now you know that revenue expenditure is a form of consumption expenditure revenue expenditure is a form of consumption ex expenditure means which is not going to generate or you can say no asset creation is there so it is not responsible for creation of asset so you can say money makes money so that is not possible under revenue expenditure so you can say it is a day to day expenditure that is also and that is why we call it consumption expenditure so for example you have seen or you have heard that whenever you can say election time is there or you can say just before the election year you see or you have observed that government used to provide so many subsidies for so many items or you can say they come out with so many welfare schemes so this is what this is going to increase the expenditure of the government but on the other side receipts are not increased so you can say receipts are either constant or decreased receipts are either constant or it is decreasing but your expenditure and particularly revenue expenditure is increasing so this gap between receipts and expenditure is going to increase and it means that whatever gap is there for that gap which we called fiscal deficit or you can say borrowing so for that borrowing government used to take borrowing or you can say government used to take money from someone else so that loan is you can say taken from someone now whenever they are taking from someone it means it is the responsibility of the government they have to repay that amount back or they have to repay that back so ultimately ultimately it is going to put a pressure on future government or you can say future generation also you can say so ultimately future generation has to pay more tax to repay this borrowing amount so you can say today's government took a borrowing so in future in future whoever is running the government they have to repay that borrowing amount so this means this means burden on consolidated fund of india now this burden should not be there so we came out with a concept of frbm act so this is new in india that is in 2003 but if you see at world level so new zealand was the first country to introduce such legislation so we can say new zealand so remember new zealand was the first country to introduce such legislation okay so to introduce such legislation now if you see 
Now this act has some salient features. So as the first key feature says, according to FRBM Act, the government should eliminate revenue deficit and reduce fiscal deficit to 3% of the GDP by 2008-9 with annual reduction target of 0.3% of GDP per year by the central government. So basically, basically what is the first salient feature is? So if you see, the first salient feature talk, talks about target. The first salient feature talks about target and target in terms of fiscal deficit and revenue deficit. So what it says that fiscal deficit must be 3% of GDP must be 3% of GDP by 2008-9 whereas revenue deficit must be 0, 0 by 2008-9. So if you see that we have never achieved the fiscal deficit target that is 3 percent. So, if you see the record of fiscal deficit since 2003 or you can say since 2008 because that was the deadline by what time we have to achieve it. So, you can say when I am saying 2008-9 it means the deadline was 31st March 2009. So, by that time we are looking that our FD must be 3 percent and RD must be 0. So, again I will tell that is by 31st March 2009. But unfortunately, we never achieved this target. So, if you see the past record, if suppose in prelims question comes that India has achieved the target of FD that is 3% of GDP once. So, you will say no. So, it is not once. They have never achieved. So, leave about once. Clear? So, now, in 2008-9, we have to achieve this target, that is 3% of GDP, that is by 2008-9, but we have never achieved and the reason is, so you must know the reason also, the reason is subprime crisis. Subprime crisis that happened in 2008-9. So, that subprime crisis are also known as North Atlantic Financial Crisis. North Atlantic Financial Crisis. So, those subprime crises are also known as, you can say, North Atlantic financial crisis. Now, this target we have to achieve in 2014. So, you can say government has set a new deadline. Okay, and the new deadline is 2014. So, it means by 31st March 2014, we have to achieve the FD target that is 3%. But we have never, we again never able to achieve it. The answer is again simple because again in 2014 you will see that that was a time period when our economy was facing inflation. Plus there were some governance challenges also. So if you see that before 2014 there were scams like Colgate scam, 2G scam plus Commonwealth scam. So there were some scams. So that is you can say governance issue. Okay, so due to these governance issue or as well as inflation, again we missed the deadline. Now, in 2014, you, you know that there were general elections and the new government came into power. So, they set a new deadline and that the new deadline is 2018. So, they said the new deadline should be 
2018 that is fd equals to 3 percent of gdp by 2018 but that time the finance minister shri arun jaitley was in favor of this thing also that you extended the deadline that's good but we have to extend this target also so he said that time in a realistic manner that three percent of gdp is difficult to achieve so we should achieve four or four point five percent but that time government said no no we'll keep the target same that is three percent but deadline should be extended but again you know that this we again not able to achieve it the answer is simple because we have introduced two major economic changes or reforms in our economy and those two important reforms are one is demonetization demonetization and second is second is introduction of gst so these are the these are the two major changes that we have introduced into you can say 2016 and 17 respectively that is why again we missed the deadline now finally we come out with the new target or new deadline that is 2021 now this time we change the target also that is 4.5 percent of gdp but that we have to achieve by 2021 so again we are not able to achieve it now you know the logic also why because of pandemic because of pandemic so pandemic was a main trouble okay so again we missed the deadline but due to pandemic our fiscal deficit has touched due to pandemic our fiscal deficit has touched 9% of gdp now this storyline you must know the answer is very simple because if you know the storyline then only you can write a good answer in mains because you must know practically what is happening so this is not a theoretical subject this is a practical subject clear so nine percent so due to pandemic our fd has touched nine percent of gdp so this was the situation in the year 2021 now government know this thing that it is very difficult to achieve three percent or even 4.5 percent so what they said that from nine percent 9% we will bring it to 6.4% that is by 31st March 2023 so this is what government has achieved so from 9% they have brought it to 6.4% now the new target which we have to achieve by 31st March 2024 is 5.9% of GDP. 5.9% of GDP, which is equal to, you can say, already I told you in my previous lecture. So if you are listening it, so which is equal to, you can say, 17.8 lakh crores. 17.8 lakh crores. So this is what you have to remember clear so 17.8 lakh crore is the new target that we have set clear or you can say 5.9 percent of gdp so we have to see that we will be able to achieve it or not so once we'll achieve it then in next one year then we have to come to 4.5 percent so this is what government strategy so government says that it is very difficult to achieve three percent immediately so we will break the targets so now we are coming in this way now we are coming in this way so if you have listened to my last uh, previous lecture so there i have talked about that government is continuously moving from you can say expansionary fiscal policy to contractionary so even i told you that what initiatives has been taken to reduce fiscal deficit so this can be an expected question so you can refer my previous videos which i have already covered so if you want to score good marks in mains so 
यू मस्ट नो इकोनॉमिकली प्रैक्टिकली वॉट इज है और वॉट यू कैन से स्टेप हैज बिन टेकन सो एटलीस्ट यू नो द ब्रॉडर इशूज दैट यू मस्ट बी प्रिपेयर फॉर दैम सो एफ डी और एफ आई से इन फिजिकल पॉलिसी चैप्टर द ओनली इशू दैट इज दैट कैन कम इन योर एग्जाम इज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एफ डी सो यू हैव टू बी प्रिपेयर दैट वॉट लॉ और कमिटीज आर देयर विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एफ डी वॉट स्टेप हैज बिन टेकन सो यू मस्ट बी रेडी फॉर दैम क्लियर सो अल्टीमेटली दिस इज अ थिंग नो इफ यू अंडरस्टूड द फर्स्ट पॉइंट सो एज आई टोल्ड यू दैट फर्स्ट so we we have started a features so as i told you the first feature is talking about targets the first feature is talking talking about targets so if you have understood the targets now you will realize one thing now you will realize one thing that when we talk about targets that when we talk about targets so targets are in terms of fd and rd so here what is the hidden thing that you or hidden concept that you have to learn now the hidden concept here is the hidden concept here is that target only talks about borrowing only talks about borrowing so please understand it carefully or with full concentration now for example if suppose your parents has given you a limit for borrowing that you can take borrowing but for example your borrowing is your borrowing limit is 5000 rupees so for example if your parents has given you a limit that in a month you can take a borrowing of 5000 not more than that so it means if suppose your receipts your receipts are 10000 and your expenditure is 15000 it means you can take this borrowing but if suppose your receipts are constant but your expenditure has increased that is from 15000 it has now become 17000 so it means you need 7000 as a borrowing but your parents has given you a limit that you can take this much as a borrowing so what i want to say that frbm act imposes limit only on the borrowing of the government but it never imposes limit on the expenditure and receipt so it means if my expenditure is increasing so i have to come out with other sources or you can say i have to come out with some other alternate which help me to increase my receipt so i'll do something that if my expenditure is increasing so i'll do something that my receipts also increase that is from 10000 it will become 12000 then only then only i can run my or manage my you can say monthly budget so this is what so if question comes like this ki frbm act imposes restrictions on expenditure and receipt of the government so your answer will be no FRBM act only imposes limit on the borrowing of the government so this is what you have to remember so borrowing is important okay so they impose limit only on the borrowing so this is what you have to remember clear clear so this is you have to remember now moving further now FRBM act provide a legal institutional framework for fiscal consolidation so ultimately fiscal consolidation means that or you can say it is a term which talks about this thing that steps has been taken to reduce your deficit or you can say to reduce borrowing because fd is equal to total borrowing to reduce your borrowing so this is what you have to understand now it is now mandatory for the central government to take measures to reduce fiscal deficit to eliminate revenue deficit and to generate revenue surplus in subsequent year now the act binds the government to adhere to the path of fiscal consolidation the government can move away from the path of fiscal consolidation only in emergency situation just like you can say natural calamity or you can say natural disaster natu national security and other exceptional grounds which central government may specify so this means you can escape 
but un under only certain situation. So this is what you have to understand. Now also here, remember that there are other features of this act. Like for example, this is the FRBM Act, which imposes ban. Imposes ban on printing of currency. So, FRBM Act imposes ban on printing of currency. So, this is what you have to remember. And this ban has been imposed since 2006. Printing of currency since 2006. So, ultimately, this printing of currency for borrowing purpose. So, as I told you that in 2021, our fiscal deficit has, has touched 9% of GDP. So, there was a debate. So, there was a debate. And what was that debate? that government must think of direct monetized deficit. Now, what is this direct monetized deficit? So, you can refer my previous video where I have talked about deficit financing. Okay, deficit financing. So, you can search on study IQ IS English channel. So, there you will find a playlist where I have whatever lectures I have recorded. So, you will find that in playlist. So, in playlist, you will find one topic that is what is deficit financing. So, there you will understand these things. Clear? Now, this is what you have to remember. Okay. So, direct monetized deficit. Now, what direct monetized deficit says? Okay. What direct monetized deficit says? Okay. That printing should be done for borrowing purpose. That is printing of currency by RBI for borrowing purpose. So, this was a debate. So, the, you can say this is the technical term for printing. But FRBM Act has banned it. So, it means this debate, this debate was done in the year 2021 when your FD has touched 9% or you can say when our FD has touched 9%. So, that was the time you will see that in newspaper there was a debate of direct monetized deficit. But Remember here one thing that if we want to go for direct monetized deficit, we have to amend this act. Ultimately, ultimately government cannot decide that we have to go for this. So, this for this to be done, we need to take the permission from the parliament. So, and when it comes to parliament, so there is a proper law making process. So, we have to go through that process. So, this is what you have to remember. Clear? Next, what is the another thing or another feature of this act is that government has to sub submit a quarterly report quarterly report with respect to Status of receipts and expenditure with respect to status of receipts and expenditure. So, government has to submit a quarterly report with respect to status of receipts and expenditure. So, this is what you have to again remember. Clear? Now, when I am talking about quarterly report, it means that is after every three months. So, you know that there are four quarters in your financial year. So, first quarter starts from April to June. So, this is quarter one. Quarter two starts from July to September. So, if you see, this is the month of September. So, we are now having a second quarter of financial year. Third quarter starts from October to 
December and fourth quarter starts from January to March. So your financial year has been divided into four quarters. So financial year has been divided into four quarters. So you have to remember this thing. Clear? Quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. Clear? Clear? So this is what you have to remember. One, two, three, and four. So we have four quarters. So that you have to remember. So ultimately, when I am saying quarterly report with respect to status of receipts and expenditure, what does it mean? That that in every quarter you have to tell about the status of receipts and expenditure. Now you know that if I talk about current quarter or you can say current financial year, so in current financial year our total receipts are 27.2 lakh crore plus 17.8 lakh crore is the borrowing that we are going to take. But our total expenditure is 45 lakh crore. Now this expenditure or receipts if I talk about expenditure part, so expenditure I am not going to spend in one month or one day. So this expenditure that is 45 lakh crores, I am going to spend in a whole financial year. So I have to tell, if suppose I am running the government, so then I have to tell to the parliament, so this report has to be submitted to the parliament with respect to, with respect to that how much expenditure I have done in quarter one. So out of 45 lakh crore, how much I have spent in quarter 1. Similarly, out of again whatever is left, how much I have spent in quarter 2, quarter 3 and quarter. So you have to tell. Similarly, whatever receipts that I am going to collect in one year, so I have to tell the status of that also. That out of 27.2 lakh crore, how much I have collected in quarter 1, quarter 2. So you know that if you are reading a newspaper, so every month you find a data that this is a GST collection, this is the income tax collection, this is the corporate tax, corporate tax collection. So ultimately, either you will find every month or, or once in a three months, that is every quarter. So that is why this news comes. So if you understood the concept, you will easily relate to the newspaper, key what to pick and what to drop. Okay. Plus, in newspaper, you don't have to remember every time what is the status. Why? Because when you will find economic survey, so, in economic survey, whatever information is coming, that will come in the compiled form. So, that is why you don't have to tension about that also. Clear? So, you must know the art of reading the newspaper. So, this is very important. So, this is very important. So, this you must know. Clear? Next. Now, as per FRBM Act, Government of India has to submit three annual reports. three annual reports and that is to the parliament and these annual reports are medium term fiscal policy statement, fiscal policy strategy statement and macroeconomic framework policy statement. So these are the three annual reports that you have to submit. Now in 2012 we added another report that is you can say added fourth annual report. So you will tell me in comment section what is the name of that fourth annual report. So again I am saying, so in 2012, under FRBM Act, another fourth or you can say fourth report is introduced. So it's your assignment or homework that you will tell me that what is the name of fourth report. And again, another thing that you have to tell me, Otherwise, I will tell you in coming lectures that what does medium term fiscal policy statement means, what does fiscal policy strategy statement means and what does macroeconomic framework policy statement mean. Clear? So, this is what you have to tell me in comment section or you can message me in my or you can say on Instagram 
दैट इज इकोनॉमी अंडर स्कोर हिमांशु सो दिस इज अबाउट टूडेज क्लास सो आई होप यू लर्न समथिंग एंड विल मीट सून विद न्यू वीडियोज और न्यू कॉन्सेप्ट तो हैव अ नाइस डे एंड जय हिंद